Hey guys, I'm uh, doing a little update of my first editions collection. I've gotten some more since the first one, so I thought I'd just update with a part two. Um, try to make this one a little less rambly. So last time I mentioned I got Blue Latitudes and the Zanzibar Chest, two of my favorite books. Not, not super collectible, but I just wanted to have signed first editions of my favorite books. Seems to make sense. So if I had to pick my top four favorite books, they would be Zanzibar Chest and Blue Latitudes as number one and two. And number three would be Carter Beats the Devil by Glenn David Gold. Um, amazing book. Um, I'm not going to describe these books in a video like this, but you should look it up. And Christopher Moore's Coyote Blue. This one's a particularly cool cover um, design, especially because it's got nice blue end papers. Um, like I said, not very, not pricey or anything. Um, I think both combined they were 130. One was 90 and one was 40. I don't remember which is which. I imagine this Carter Beats the Devil is 90. So this is actually uh, the British Hotter and Stoughton Scepter first printing of Carter Beats the Devil. From my research, even though he is an American author, I'm pretty sure that this edition actually came out before the American edition and not simultaneously published an actual earlier by, you know, six months or a year or something um, release. So I now have signed first editions, first editions of my four favorite books. Pretty cool. Um, very quickly, I got these... Uh, you may remember last time I had almost everything in, in uh, pile stacks. Um, I got these awesome uh, bookends from SPI Home. It's kind of rabbit biking, reading frogs, and kids looking around uh, boards of some sort. Uh, the other thing I did is I continued with getting John Klassen stuff that he's illustrated, um, not picture books, but just he's done a lot of, not a lot, but several covers. So uh, I got Kelly Barnhill's The Witch's Boy. Really, really nice John Klassen cover. Um, I mentioned last time he had done The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. So I got two of those. This one is actually the first book. Um, Neither of these are signed by him. I don't really care, excuse me, about that that much, but um, this one, the place wouldn't put it in a broad art for me, which was kind of shitty of them. So that's why it's still in the plastic. I need to do that myself. Um, and then actually this is, that was the first book. This is the third book, which I got. It's in beautiful condition. Um, so I have two more of his to get. He did the the hardcover first printings of these. He they've been reprinted and they've also had a paperback edition. He did not do the inert, the uh, illustrations of those. So kind of tough to get. I've been having trouble finding the other two. Um, I still have a couple more things of his to get, but not too many. Uh, one thing I kind of struck out on is um, I've been wanting a copy of the Snowy Day. Um, you may know. It's a Caldecott winner from 1962 or 3, I forget which. Um, it's ex incredibly hard to find first editions, or first printings, rather, of this book. And as you can see, this is one. Um, the first printings are the ones that has no other printing listed on this page, other than 1962. So, um, you'll see it has no dust jacket, um, which I thought, you know, in general it makes books pretty useless but occasionally you'll see ones that still keep some value quintessential rare books uh in orange county was selling this book signed without dust jacket for thirty five hundred dollars so this exact copy um except signed so i figured you know i saw this someone selling on ebay i hate ebay but someone was selling a first printing of this on ebay and i figured you know if the signed version is going for thirty five hundred it's got to be worth a few hundred Starting bid was eight, and I ended up bidding it up to eighty something dollars. I've tried to sell it a couple times to booksellers, but even you know, even the guy who was selling that one, you know, he's like, oh, I don't need another one. So that's kind of a bust so far. I would really love, I would love to have one with a dust jacket, but I haven't seen one for sale at anywhere. Um, that's the first printing, first issue dust jacket. So that's the best I can do so far. Um, probably gonna end up selling that copy though. 
But the mother load is these right here. So I'll try to get them all in. I got to even back up. So as a kid growing up in New England, I loved the John Beller's books. They're kind of teen gothic mysteries. Um, I used to read the the uh, Bantam Skylark paperbacks in the 80s. Um, really just great gothic feel. Kind of suited my, you know, gloomy New England weather that I grew up in. And I, I used to love reading these. I've read, I read all of them up to uh, somewhere up here as a kid. Um, so one thing people may or may not know about these books is that uh, they were illustrated originally by Edward Gorey, who's a very famous uh, illustrator who's now deceased. Um, but um, Gorey is very collectible, even though Bellier's isn't. So um, these books are actually fairly valuable. The most valuable one is, uh, is this book, uh, The House with the Clock and Its Walls, which some of you may know. Uh, this is a very, very rare first printing uh, in great condition and um, signed by Edward Gorey in his usual way. There's the frontispiece to it. Um, I was seeing these around. I really wanted these because this was the first one I read of his. I actually read it in school. And um, I saw them going for four or five hundred. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to spend that really. Um, and I was thinking, you know, once I get that one, I'm going to want to collect them all. And, you know, most of these are absolutely impossible to find in good condition. The hardcovers, even just getting a hardcover is actually, they're fairly hard to find. So um, I was looking around on an auction site and someone literally was selling this entire lot. And uh, it was, you know, I'd seen this one go for four or $500 multiple times. And the starting bid was 650 on this whole lot. So I, I was like, I have to actually try. And you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, there's no way I'd ever be able to build this collection. It would take probably 10 or 12 years uh, to get, you know, these are almost all in great condition, except some of, you know, a couple of them. And um, so I put in a 2000 max bid and, you know, some people bid it up on, on auction day and it went up to about nine something, but, you know, including buyer's premium and, and, uh, and, uh, shipping and it ended up being about $1,300 and I would say well worth it. I mean, one of my favorite childhood authors, all the gory illustrated books, 22 books, uh, and a 23rd, um, which he didn't illustrate, Alpheus Winterborn. Um, so that's what I've picked up. Uh, next on my list is, uh, Finishing out John Klassen, the couple books I mentioned I still need to get of his. Um, working on Chris Van Allsburg and more Caldecotts. So that'll be in part three, hopefully. See ya.